of the two pixies I'm most familiar with. One was developed to heal Earth of Grenier industrialization and deforestation before Ballas perverted the research and turned her into a violent protector. The other was created when a baby farted. And the first time that a baby laughs, a fairy's life takes flight. One annihilated an entire battalion of elite Dax soldiers, ultimately sacrificing her life to protect her creator. The other thinks it's funny to sell her friends out to a deranged pirate. No by noise. One, two, three. Well, get on with it. One is followed by a kaleidoscope of ravenous butterflies that distract and dismantle her enemies, while the other is followed around by... Yes! I wondered Very that nice. That's if you exactly could what go you with us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One collects John Prodman posters and credits by the millions. The other collects actual trash. So tell me, why is Tinkerbell adored by millions the world over, but hardly anyone plays Titania? Oh, come on, Warframe community. That cannot be your answer for everything. I think maybe it's that Titania is misunderstood. So I'm going to do my best to explain how she works and what makes her the deadliest Warframe in the entire game. Pound for pound. Oquat Tangent Wan, my people, and welcome to the Complete Guide to Titania. Or as the good folks at Oxford Dictionary insist she be called... Titania. Titania? Titania. Titania? Titania. Okay, so we're gonna go with Titania. Though this does kind of illustrate my point about her being a complicated lady. In fact, I needed to do research to figure out which areas of her kit I needed to research. And that's not even a joke. We're dealing with the Warframe itself. It's razor wing form, her razor flies, and two exalted weapons. There's questions about her damage reduction, damage reflection, evasion, arcane and mod interactions, companion interactions, and the answers I saw people giving were too often conflicting, wrong, or non-existent. For example, there are reports that energy conversion doesn't affect Razor Wing, but I tested it in actual missions rather than the simulacrum, and it's working just fine. There's also people claiming that the Vigilante set bonus affects her exalted pistols, Dexpixia. I tested this too, and unfortunately, it does not. What about Adarza Kavat's Cat's Eye and its flat 60% crit chance buff? Does that work with Dexpixia? Should you ever use her exalted melee, Dewada? Should I even bother modding it then? Why and how? Why does she have so many sub abilities? Why am I asking questions out loud and then answering them in text? That's a very good question. That's a very good question. So many questions, too few answers based on actual testing until now. But first, Let's talk about how you acquire Titania. She's available in both Prime and non-Prime versions, with the Prime variant offering higher base health, armor, and energy, as well as two additional polarities, one Matarai and one Naramon. The Prime's main blueprint and all component blueprints come from their associated Void Relics, and she is not vaulted as of this video's posting. As for the non-Prime variant, the main blueprint and all component blueprints are rewards from the Silver Grove quest. Her passive grants the upsurge buff to both Titania and nearby allies whenever she casts an ability, and this generates 4 health per second for 20 seconds. Additionally, she gets plus 25% bullet jump and rolling distance, though this isn't mentioned in the tooltip. Casting Spellbind on an enemy or ally creates a field that disarms and CCs all nearby enemies, and grants status immunity to allies within range. A held cast allows you to center the field on Titania herself. Status immunity is extremely good in any scenario, but extra useful when you're first learning to control Titania in razor wing form, as you're going to be bumping into everything. The Spellbound Harvest Augment gives Titania energy back when hitting at least four enemies with the ability. Her two, Tribute, is technically a single ability with four different buff options available. Quick Press cycles through the buffs, and as I mentioned earlier, they can all be strong depending on the circumstances. Aiming at a foe within range and using a held cast damages and CCs that enemy for a duration and creates an icon at their location. If the enemy survives, their damage is reduced by 25%. When Titania or her Razorflies pick up the icon, she's granted the buff which was selected when the ability was cast. 
The buff comes in the form of an aura, which lasts for two minutes and covers a 35 meter radius, regardless of our build's duration or range. And for each buff that's active, an additional razor fly is created. Thorns is perhaps the most useful, as it grants 50% damage reduction, as well as causing 50% of damage taken to be reflected back at the attacker. The buff is also applied at full strength to allies within its aura. Though you may not need this in all situations, I find that it's good to get in the habit of creating the buff at the start of every mission. Dust offers another form of survivability, this time in the form of evasion. Attackers within the aura have their accuracy reduced by 50%. Full Moon increases the damage of Titania's Razor Flies and all companions in its aura by 75% and increases their health and armor by 50% as well. If you decide to invest in Dewata, this Razor Flies buff can be monstrous. Finally, Entangle slows a movement of enemies in its aura by 25%. This is probably the weakest of the buffs, and I generally only use it for the additional razor fly, or if I'm defending a position like in a defense, mobile defense, or excavation. Her third ability is Lantern, which turns a single enemy target into a floating, invulnerable aggro beacon, attracting nearby enemies. Those who get close enough are dealt a tick of heat damage each second for the duration of the ability. You can have up to four lanterns active at once, and when the ability expires or is ended by holding three, all active lanterns explode, dealing heat damage to the source as well as all nearby enemies. This is another good option for area defense situations, but it requires decent range to be effective. As I'll talk about in a bit, both my default and index builds use negative range, so lantern is what I replace via helmet. Its augment, beguiling lantern, causes enemies affected by the ability to take 100% more base melee damage. Razor Wing shrinks Titania down to a quarter of her normal size. Oh, thank heavens, he's completely unharmed. It also gives her Arcwing like flight and controls, spawns Razor Flies, and grants access to her exalted weapons. This is where Titania is at maximum power, survivability, and mobility, so it's where you want to spend most of your time when playing her. She gains an additional 50% evasion while in Razor Wing form, making her extremely difficult to hit when paired with the Dust Tribute. She spawns six Razor Flies when Razor Ring is activated, which seek out and damage enemies while also drawing their aggro. While their damage isn't earth shattering, it's also not negligible. Watch how quickly they can chew up basic level 100 enemies. If you're familiar with Titania, but never seen her Razor Flies deal that much damage before, it's probably because of this little known fact. Some mods, when equipped on Dewata, affect the damage of your Razor Flies. More on that in just a second. The Razor Ring Blitz Augment grants plus 25% increases to both flight speed and fire rate for 8 seconds after using an ability, but both of these scale with strength and duration respectively. Now let's get into the details of her Exalted Melee. Remember earlier when I said you never want to actually use Dewata, but you still want to mod it? That's because some of the mods will affect the damage of your Razor Flies. But if you look for information about what does or doesn't have an effect, there's nothing here but bunch of dead sea crabs. Well, I, I don't know anything about those crabs, but here's what I found in my testing. Razor flies deal slash damage, so it makes sense that plus impact and plus puncture have no effect. Plus melee damage having no effect seems odd, so I checked this in both the simulacrum and in mission, but it does seem to be the case. And even though both Dewata and Razor Flies are said to have 10% status chance, I never once saw a status proc, even with a build that pushed status chance to 61%. Considering what does work, here's the build I recommend for Dewata. Attack speed, crit chance, crit damage, a big boost to slash damage, and a few elementals. I've chosen Corrosive and Cold because I wanted to have a combination of elements that would work well against as many faction EHP types as possible, so this could be a set it and forget it build. This is also why I haven't included a Prime Smite faction mod. And when looking at the three major factions, Corrosive is reduced only once, by 50% versus Proto Shields. It gets a plus 75% bonus versus Fossilized and Ferrite Armor, which can appear on enemies from all three factions, and is neutral to everything else. Corrosive also lets me use Primed Fever Strike to take advantage of its large damage increase. Cold's only reduction is versus Fossilized, by 25%. It's boosted by 25% versus Alloy Armor and Infested Sinew, by 50% versus Corpus Shields, and neutral to everything else. And one final tip regarding Razor Flies, and this comes courtesy of a viewer named Marco. Razor Flies can proc the Pack Seeker Kit Gun Arcane, provided you're carrying a secondary with it equipped. Excellent! 
As you can see here, I've got a Catch Moon kit gun with just the Arcane, no mods, and when my Razor Flies get a headshot kill, four projectiles are created which seek out the heads of nearby enemies and deal significant damage. It's just another way to min-max your total damage output, if you're so inclined. Next up is Dexpixia, and I've basically got one build with slight variations for niche circumstances. I did my usual OCD thing and booted up a spreadsheet, but when- No, 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 no. You are way too trigger happy. I was saying that when I started plugging stuff in, I realized that there wasn't a lot of room for flexibility. The strength bonuses were decided by my Titania build's needs, and four of the eight Dexpixia mods were taken by things that don't contribute to a raw per shot damage calculation. Galvanized Diffusion and Lethal Torrent give multi-shot and fire rate. Galvanized Shot is a huge increase to status chance and, yes, damage, but not an easily quantifiable value. You might be wondering why I'd put Prime Target Cracker on a weapon with 10% crit chance, especially when I've already said it can't benefit from Adarza Kavat's Cat's Eye. I'll explain when I show you my Titania build, so for now, you just gotta trust me. And I'm supposed to trust you? Tell me something, Miss Lesbian. When did you start liking boys? Keep my personal life out of this. Jeez. Anyway, the bottom row was supposed to be my flexible slots, but here's what happened. Hornet Strike has been dropped from every pistol build in existence, but that's because most pistol builds can now use the new secondary arcanes, which boost raw damage. Dexpixia has no arcane slot, so Hornet Strike is a must-have. Carney's Stinger was also non-negotiable, since it boosts status chance even higher and nearly doubles our slash damage which Dexpixia is already heavily weighted towards. With just two slots remaining, Viral by way of two 60-60 mods was a no-brainer. Pushing status chance in 90% alone is worth it, as it means an endless supply of those sweet armor-bypassing slash procs. The fact that any Viral procs will boost the damage of those slash procs even higher is just icing on the cake. There was really no need for the spreadsheet, and any swaps I made just confirmed what I already knew. This is perfect. <laughs> sure. Primed Heated Charge shows more damage on the sheet than Carney's Stinger, but it's not enough to make up for the lower status chance and reduced weighting of slash damage. But one situation where I change this is when I'm heading into Camion Drift, where Viral isn't worth much, but Corrosive does quite well. The other situation is in the Index, but I'll discuss that when I talk about the Index version of my Titania build. Oh yeah, that's right. I've still got builds for Titania sitting around if anyone's interested. You think anyone's made it this far? Oh, come on, the video isn't that long. Well, first is a starter build, which I've made to fit either Titania or Titania Prime without any Forma or even an Oricon Reactor. It also requires no Primed mods, Arcanes, or a Helmet swap. Pistol Amp fits her native polarity and boosts Dexpixia's damage, but any Matter Eye polarity aura will get the job done. Titania craves strength and duration most, so we get those from Intensify, Augur Secrets, Augur Message, and Continuity. Flow gives us a decent energy pool so we can stay in Razor Wing longer, and Vitality provides enough HP to endure some punishment, then take advantage of Upsurge's healing. You don't need to have a maxed out Vitality for this to work. You can plug in whatever you can afford endo-wise, and then just level it up as you go. Next is my default setup, which is what I use pretty much every time I take Titania out for a spin. My build is extremely heavy on duration, which comes from Narrow Minded, Prime Continuity, and Augur Message. This is to bring the channeling cost of Razor Wing down to 1.96 energy per second, above the minimum of 1.25, but still perfectly manageable. When you combine this with an expanded energy pool from Prime Flow, and max energy at mission start from Preparation, it means we can jump straight into Razor Wing and only drop out when we want to recast the ability and refresh our Razor Flies. And since Titania's kills heal her Razor Flies, this isn't something that needs to be done much until you spend a good chunk of time in a Steel Path mission or arbitration. The welcome byproduct of all this duration is that Spellbind lasts for 40 seconds and the recommended Helmand swaps are all affected as well. Nullstar creates 15 particles for 75% damage reduction, Pillage covers a massive area, while Roar and Eclipse last for more than a full minute. Go with Roar if you want the pure damage boost option, Eclipse if you want a mix of damage and tankiness depending on your surrounding light level, Pillage if you want a combination of tankiness and armor strip, and Nullstar if you want the pure tankiness option. If you're wondering, Nullstar's 75% brings Titania's total damage reduction to 87.5% when paired with the Thorns tribute, which makes her nearly as tanky as Gara or Nova and that's before factoring in her evasion or passive healing. 
Also, regarding the damage reduction while airborne mods, they're all multiplicative with thorns, so you would need to free up three mod spots on Titania, one for Aviator and two for the Boreal's mods, and also carry a polearm with Boreal's Contempt on it to match that level of damage reduction. I don't think it's worth the mod space on Titania, but you should definitely have a polearm with Boreal's Contempt in your loadout, since it's free damage reduction, in addition to being an excellent mod, if you have the space for it. Now the negative range comes from narrow-minded, and may seem somewhat unfortunate until you consider that Razor Wing and Tribute's buff auras are not affected by range, Titania can take full advantage of Spellbind, Eclipse, and Roar without range, and Nullstar actually benefits from low range since you'll have to get extremely close to enemies before losing a particle. Strength comes from Umbral Intensify and Transient Fortitude, and I considered Blind Rage, but the hit to efficiency raises the channeling cost of Razor Wing too high. Instead, we go with energy conversion and simply drop out of Razor Wing for a moment when we pick up an energy orb, then recast it to get a buffed instance. Razor Wing Blitz also benefits greatly from our duration and strength, both of which affect the scaling of its bonuses. Just be sure to stay out of sprint mode unless you're in an open world, as the movement speed bonus gets way too high, and note that a buffed instance of Razor Wing will lead to higher total buffs from Razor Wing Blitz. Arcane Precision gives an enormous 300% damage buff to Dexpixia whenever we land a headshot. And get this, Razorfly attacks can proc this bonus. And this happens all the time just randomly, so you really don't even need to worry about this buff as long as you have Razorflies around. But if you're the type who'd rather hold the trigger down than get free damage, you can swap this out for Arcane Pistolier and its chance for 102% ammo efficiency on headshot kills with Dexpixia. Finally, let's talk about this aura which I'm sure has got many of you scratching your heads. Combat discipline? Why would you want to take 10 damage every time you kill an enemy? That doesn't seem very... Look, an idiot! What? Rude. Now here's the answer. Arcane Avenger has a chance to proc whenever we take damage and grants a flat plus 45% crit chance when it does. This pushes Dexpixia's paltry 10% crit chance up to a respectable 55% and makes that prime target cracker I showed you earlier a lot more impactful told you to trust me. What makes combat discipline extremely palatable is the fact that it's affected by damage reduction, meaning we only lose 5 health instead of 10 when Thorns is active, and only 2 if Nullstar is also active. And don't forget, using any ability triggers our passive, which heals 4 health per second, so the lost HP is almost immediately regained. I tweak my default setup a little when taking Titania into the Index, where I find the convenience and utility of enemy radar to be extremely valuable. I further boost that radar's range with Vigilante Pursuit in place of Umbral Intensify, make up some of that lost strength with Power Drift in place of Preparation, which doesn't work in the Index. I also swap out Arcane Avenger for Energize, since the former won't proc often enough without Combat Discipline, and the latter helps deal with Energy Drain from carrying points. And because I don't have the juicy crit chance anymore, I replace Prime Target Cracker with Prime Heated Charge in my Dex Pixia build for the Index. By the way, I haven't talked about this much, but I almost never use a frame other than Titania in the Index. Not only does her damage rival even the mighty Mesa, but her damage reduction, evasion, and passive healing make her virtually unkillable. And as if that wasn't enough, Razor Wing also benefits from having its own vacuum-like effect. So while every other frame has to walk directly over energy, health, mod, and point pickups, Titania only needs to be nearby to grab it all. You will need to break that nasty habit of carrying around a ton of points, though. With Titania, it's better to bank often and avoid the huge energy drain from carrying too many points than it is to get the bonus. And hey, if you're interested in this alternate build for Titania, I won't go into a lot of detail, but here's what it looks like. This is a much more balanced build, and I use this on the rare occasion that I take Titania into a zone control or defense type mission. This isn't what she excels at, but she can certainly get the job done with Lantern and some range. So obviously I don't replace Lantern with this setup, and you don't have to replace anything really, but I do like Banshee's Silence in place of Spellbind, specifically the way it interacts with the slow from the Entangle tribute. Can I, can I leave now? No, you can't. Yeah, sorry, but I have two quick tips before I'm done. First, since I don't need energy regen from Xenoric, I use the Matter Eye Focus with Titania. The bonus 25% to both elemental and physical damage is always helpful, as are the blinds and stuns you can inflict in Void Mode. Second, though companions are generally useless with her, as they and their buffs disappear when you go into Razor Wing, the Vaska Kavat and its transfusion precept can be a literal lifesaver. Should you ever drop during a mission, 
this little bloodsucker will appear and sacrifice 20% of its HP to revive you. Just keep in mind that it has a 120 second cooldown and it doesn't work in arbitrations. But hey, now you have a reason to use something other than a Darza, Smita, or Slyvalpa Phyla for once. And I think I'm finally out of stuff to say about Titania, if you can believe that. So, you're welcome. You're welcome. We'll come to think of it, I gotta go.